Yes! Happy Pokemon Day everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. It's been a hot minute since we've done a Pokemon video here on the show, and naturally, as many of you know, I like to go in order when it comes to completing these games. And while I love Pokemon, I am super, super far behind in regards to the most recent games. Sun and Moon are out today, so I thought, what better way to tackle the next generation for me, Generation 3. But as always, I'll need some help with some of my good friends. Hmm. Who am I going to be inviting on this week's episode? <gasps> Do I leave it in the box or take it out of the box? Always such a tough one. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing. Sweet, I'm a total Hoenn baby. This is perfect. Everybody, I'm World Runner Up Alex. And I'm Poke Kellos. Today's part two of our Kellos Legendary Trilogy, and where last week we talked about Cernius. Jimmy! <sighs> Today we're talking about its polar opposite. What's up, dude? Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? Right. Fine. Plus, he totally fine. Like I tuning for was it. fine, yeah. Hi. Sweet. You know, good, we, good. Like hey, I know they're doing the whole Dex thing over there, but I'm gonna pull you away from them. We okay. have to, we have to do Pokemon Gen 3 on the completionist. Yeah, you in? Uh, there might be a sound type. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Sick Great. I, I already had the two of them on it, so you're you're next. Yeah, let me let's just go. Everyone, please welcome to the show Tamashi and Jimmy Sunder. Hey Gerard, glad I can help out. Anytime I can play Pokemon is a good time. All right, let's get this show on the road. In case you're one of the few people who aren't aware of just how big Pokemon still is, allow me to expound. The Pokemon anime is about to enter its 20th season. The entire world was rocked not that long ago by a little app called Pokemon Go. And the newest entries in the long-standing mainline Pokemon video game series, Pokemon Sun and Moon, hit shelves today. <gasps> Shh, listen. Can you hear it? You can almost hear it making millions as we speak. Sun and Moon represent the start of the seventh generation of Pokemon games, as well as the start of my transition into becoming an old man. So I thought it would be a good time to revisit the series where we last left off, namely Generation 3, which includes Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and later on with Emerald. Gen 3 was a time of upheaval for Pokemon. The games were making the move from the Game Boy systems to the fancy new Game Boy Advance. The complexity and the customizability of Pokemon were being expanded, and the list of discovered Pokemon swelled even further. But alas, all of those old school pokes that were caught in the first two generations had to be left behind, since the old games couldn't connect to the Game Boy Advance due to the hardware limitations of the Game Boy. Many Poke friends were lost that day, and many more trainers around the world turned their backs on the Pokemon franchise altogether. Pour out a Hyper Potion for our fallen brothers and sisters, y'all. Despite that, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald went on to become absolutely adored by everyone and their moms, and they sold like a gajillion copies or something. Yeah, I know it's not a real number, but it's Pokemon. They're gonna sell! Thanks for having us, Gerard. Yeah, we're always ready to help when it comes to Pokemon. I'm glad to hear it, and as a thanks for helping me out, I'll let you guys choose which games you want to play first. Real, Really? Absolutely! Are you... Sure about that? Yeah, go for it. It's all the same to me anyway. All right then, well, uh, I'll take Sapphire version. My trainer's name will be Jimmy, and I'll choose Mudkip for my starter, who shall from now on be known as Dirt Boy. And I'll play Ruby. My trainer will be named Tomashi, and I'll pick Torchic. And I don't think I'll give it a nickname because I think Torchic is cute as it is. Which leaves me with Emerald. I guess this Trico is mine, and I'll call him Emerald. Because Emerald. All right, well, good luck with Emerald, Gerard. Wait, what do you mean? Well, Emerald is, like, by far the one with the most content, and it'll definitely be the hardest one to complete. Can I trade with one of you, please? Sorry, I already named my trainer. And I just picked my starter. <sighs> I did this to myself. Well, I may have picked the hardest game out of the three, but we're all gonna end up having a similar journey. We're gonna start off by going on a good old-fashioned Pokemon adventure. 
beat the gym leaders, beat the Elite Four, and become the very best like no one ever was. Then we're gonna tackle the post-game content, which includes capturing legendary Pokemon, competing in some battle-focused side quests, and generally tying up all the loose ends. And finally, we're gonna hunt down and trap every single Pokemon in the National Dex. Without a doubt, we'll need to rely on each other to complete that colossal task. But make no mistake, even though we'll have to occasionally cooperate, this is still a competition. And the person who beats the Elite Four with a complete Pokedex in the least amount of time will win a prize. And that prize is this, uh... Target gift card I had lying on my desk. Oh, how much is it worth? I don't remember. Okay, okay then. Even with our combined efforts, completing these three games will not be easy. With all the content and new Pokemon added to this game, there's just that much more to complete. But this is Pokemon after all. And even though I might not recognize a lot of the new faces in Gen 3, I'm sure I'll have a pretty damn good time. And who knows, maybe I'll even win that gift card. <laughs> no, there's no way, Gerard. Yeah, this competition is pretty much just between me and Jimmy at this point. I know. Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald use the power behind the Game Boy Advance to present a Pokemon game that's more powerful, more impressive, and even a bit more mature than ever before. These games start out just like the previous games do with a tree-themed Pokemon professor explaining the wonderful world of Poke- Wait a minute, is that Alex? Yo, that guy's even got sandals! When the hell were you gonna tell me you were in a Pokemon game, Alex? Oh. I guess I forgot to mention it. My bad. Here's a first for the Pokemon series. Instead of being a local, your character is actually moving into the starting town when the game begins. And it seems that you got some pretty crappy parents because they allowed you to ride in the back of a moving truck. You're now the newest resident of Little Root Town in the Hoenn region. And in another unprecedented move, your character actually has both a mother and a father. Your dad, however, is too busy with his job as a gym leader to help his family move in. What a swell guy. Father of the year, 10 out of 10. As your character explores the area right outside of Little Root Town, he or she encounters Professor Alex being chased by a wild Pokemon. He implores you to help him by picking from one of the three Pokemon in his bag. And if you thought your choice was a temporary thing, considering that a man's life was in danger, think again because you're stuck with this little critter forever. After watching you in battle, the professor thinks you've got what it takes to be a genuine Pokemon trainer. He gives you your very own Pokedex and sends you out into the world to fend for yourself. You're 10 now. Go forth unsupervised to catalog hundreds of monsters, including ghosts and dragons and stuff. You'll be fine. But you'll have to be careful since, of course, there are shady organizations who'll make your quest pretty tough. Depending on whether you're playing Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald, you'll either face Team Magma, who are obsessed with covering the Earth's surface in landmass, Team Aqua, who wish to drown the planet, or both at the same time. Emerald's the one with both, isn't it? Yep. Right. In any case, what we've got here is a classic Pokemon premise with enough novelty to keep things fresh and exciting. The two rival villain teams certainly shake up the status quo, especially when you consider that their ultimate goals go beyond the usual steal pokes get money. And for the first time, the legendary Pokemon that grace the box art for each game are intricately involved in the plot. It's not the best story in the world, but compared to previous Pokemon games, the narrative certainly has higher stakes. The games look great on the Game Boy Advance, running at a smooth 60 frames per second. And thanks to the Hoenn region's tropical climate, there are several beautiful locations for you to visit. You've got everything from volcanoes where the ash falls like snow to vast open oceans. There are more colors and detail in the sprites than ever before, giving you a much better look at Pokemon from the past. And I have to admit that all the new Pokemon look great too. I can only imagine what it must have been like as a kid to witness the improvement from Generation 2 visuals to Generation 3 visuals. There must have been a lot of little blown minds out there in 2002. The games sound great too, with soundtracks that are impressively layered and compositions that are catchy and diverse if you don't mind a lot of French horn. Plus, the Pokemon's cries sound a little less like a corrupted modem. Aw, you do have a soul in there somewhere. Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald represent a shift towards sophistication for the Pokemon series, but they're still firmly planted in their roots of fun comes first. There's clear evidence here that Pokemon is growing up a bit, and it's no longer just about forcing small animals to fight one another. Yeah, there's like, environmental messages in there. This is about saving the world from giant monsters, from brightly colored gangs, and from basically anyone who's not a 10 year old. If Pokemon has taught us anything, they're the only ones we can trust.
Generation 3 is still relatively early in the Pokemon franchise, so we didn't yet know that Game Freaks' modus operandi with each generation would be to take two steps forward and one step back when it comes to the content that they include. But Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald have so much new content on top of the old stuff that it's clear that they're the best Pokemon games of their time. The games still revolve around catching magical monsters and traveling from town to town to make your magical monsters fight against other magical monsters, all to make said monsters stronger. But a few new additions to the Pokemon formula drastically altered the gameplay experience. First off, there's the addition of Pokemon Natures, which are randomly generated stats that determine which of a Pokemon's six battle stats will get a slight boost as it grows, and which of those stats will be slightly inhibited as it grows. For example, Dirt Boy's nature is rash, which means that its special attack is augmented, whereas its special defense will suffer a bit. Also, it means that Dirt Boy don't give a shuckle about nobody. The other biggest addition in Gen 3 are Pokemon abilities, which are passive abilities that each Pokemon has. Think of them like a fifth move for your Pokemon that you can't select, but will instead be triggered under specific conditions or are just always turned on. Torchic has the ability Blaze, which gives it a boost to Fire-type moves when its health is low. Burn him up, little dude! Something else that really shakes things up are double battles, which are exactly what they sound like. Now, two of your little critters can team up against another pair of critters for some dope tag team action. But I've made myself sad because now I want Pokemon based on the Dudley boys. <sighs> Why do I keep doing this to myself? But if battling isn't your thing, then Gen 3 has got your back with Pokemon contests. These are competitions in which your Pokemon can participate, but they aren't based on who's the strongest. Instead, they're based on one of the five categories. Beauty, cuteness, cleverness, coolness, and toughness. The judges first take a gander at your Pokemon, determining how closely it represents the contest category that you've chosen. And then you move on to the portion of the competition where you dazzle the judges with your Pokemon's moves. And don't f*** it up. That's right, work that runway. And for those of you who are really into making forts, there are now secret bases located all around Hoenn. After claiming one for yourself, you can create a little home away from home, where you can store pieces of furniture, items, and polka dolls. You may be living in a tree, but it's at least a rent-free tree, and it looks better than most apartments I've lived in. There are honestly too many new features to mention them all, such as more Pokemon moves, more types of Pokeballs, and oh my god, the running shoes. Thank the lord for the running shoes! You can finally move at a reasonable speed without a bike. You can even run indoors! Shut up, old man, you don't control me anymore! Some things are just as they've always been. Beating the gym leaders in the Pokemon League is still relatively easy, but the post-game is no joke. First off, there are now more legendary Pokemon than ever. You know, those incredibly powerful beings that will swat away 30 of your Pokeballs before they even come close to letting themselves be caught? Well, now there's eight of these behemoths to spend hours trying to catch. The most annoying of these legendaries are Latias and Latios. Once you beat the game, you'll be able to randomly encounter one of these two powerful Pokemon. But what makes them a pain is that every time you enter or exit an area, they'll also move to another random location somewhere in Helen. Even after you encounter them the first time, allowing you to track them with your Pokedex, you'll still only end up in the same area as them if you're lucky. And even if you do manage to encounter one of them, it'll attempt to run away on the very first turn of battle. I hope you didn't waste your Master Ball on that sweet Tropius you saw earlier. And then there's the Battle Tower, which is a post-game facility dedicated to testing the combat techniques of trainers who have beaten the Pokemon League. The battle format is simple enough. You choose three Pokemon to compete in a series of seven battles in a row. You earn prizes after every seven wins, with better prizes being rewarded for maintaining your winning streak. But that's NOTHING compared to what replaces the Battle Tower in Pokemon Emerald. The Battle Frontier, an entire amusement park designed around battling in every way imaginable. This place right here is what makes Emerald a completely different beast than Ruby and Sapphire. There are seven different facilities, each with its own twist on the battle formula including one that's in the style of an elimination tournament, one where Pokemon are judged on the quality of their fights, and one where the computer takes complete control of your Pokemon for the entire duration of the battle. Earning enough consecutive wins at one of these facilities will eventually pitch you against that location's frontier brain. Think of them like super specialized gym leaders. Beating them won't get you any badges, but you will be awarded with a silver symbol for defeating them the first time, and a gold symbol after beating them the second time in a single winning streak. Just reaching the frontier brains is a trial, thanks to all of the weird stipulations that get placed on the fights leading up to them. And if you lose just once on your way, you have to start all over again. It took me forever to beat every Frontier Brain, and it is without a doubt the hardest and most time-consuming aspect 
of Pokemon Emerald. You know what? I think I'm done battling Pokemon forever. I just want to do Pokemon contests from now on. Have mercy on me, oh great RuPaul. Don't fuck it up. When it finally came time to catch them all, things quickly became much more complex than I originally thought they'd be. See, you can obtain just about all the Generation 3 Pokemon between the three games that we're completing. We had to rely on the help of some of my good friends to get our hands on some of the more elusive mythical Pokemon, but that was expected. What surprised me was that many of the Pokemon from the first and second gen are completely unobtainable in Generation 3. That is, unless you dive into Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. That's right. Tons of Pokemon can only be caught in the remakes of the original games, which meant that I had to play through two entirely separate games in order for us to be able to complete Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. And let me make this clear. It's not like all of the old Pokemon we needed were available early in the game, but getting to revisit the Kanto region was pretty cool. So as always, here on the show, when it comes to these kinds of games, we've got to go Pokemon Trainer versus Pokemon Trainer versus Pokemon Trainer. Who can capture them all the fastest, and who can beat the Elite Four with the best time. So, here we are, once again, and I chose Emerald like an idiot. So, let's just get this show on the road. I've determined that nothing changes. War never changes. Pokemon never changes. You just keep capturing and capturing and capturing. And the number keeps going up and the number keeps going on up. Whatever you want It'll look you in the eye Flow like a feather Skip makes me cry of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. God damn it, I died. And after the dust had settled, we all walked away with complete Generation 3 Pokédexes. Here's my personal completion time. Impressive, but not enough to beat my time. Ah, uh, yeah, congrats to the both of you. Well, what was your time? <sighs> Do we really need to go over this? Here. Oh, wow. Yeah, Tamashi, enjoy your gift card. Thanks, Gerard. No problem. Hey, man, you all right? I'm fine, I'm just... I'm never gonna win one of these Pokémon challenges, am I? Probably not, man. Ah, it feels good to complete a game that actually gives you stuff for finishing its tasks. Of course, beating the game for the first time opens up a slew of post-game content that we've already covered. And while you may not get anything for completing the regional Hoenn decks in Ruby and Sapphire, doing so in Emerald rewards you with your choice of one of the three Johto starters. That's something, right, Gerard? Mm, I guess. Come on, Gator Boy. Say, see you later, boy. 
Reaching 56 straight wins in both the level 50 mode and the level 100 mode of Ruby and Sapphire's Battle Tower will reward the participating Pokémon with the winning ribbon and the victory ribbon, respectively. They stay in your Pokémon's profile forever, proving that they're better than all the rest. Completing Pokémon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald has dominated my life for the past couple of weeks, and they definitely took their toll on me. The Battle Frontier and the mandatory excursion into Pokémon Leaf Green and Fire Red have ensured that I won't be completing another Pokémon game for quite some time. I feel like I should talk about this a little bit more, but the Battle Frontier really is a pain in the ass. I can't even begin to describe how many times I failed when I was about to win. And the closer I got to victory, the bigger the mess up I did. I cannot stress how much bullshit the Battle Frontier is. And it only gets worse as it goes on! I'm sorry, that's my, that's my one thing about this game. One thing I didn't like. But ultimately, I had a great time. And there's simply no way that I could have done it without the help of my friends. During our completionist nightmare of Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, there were five campaigns beaten, 24 Hoenn badges earned, 14 Frontier symbols secured, well over 1,000 total Pokemon caught, our total playtime hour, which includes Pokemon Ruby, Pokemon Sapphire, Pokemon Emerald, Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, and a part of Pokemon Coliseum totals up to 551 hours and 26 minutes. This may be the biggest episode in regard to hours sunk in. And... $25 to Target that Tamashi can now spend any way that she'd like. Wow, $25? That's a lot of gumballs. Enjoy it, my friend. When it comes to the Pokemon games that I've now played, they just keep getting better and better. There are so many things to do in Generation 3, it'll keep even the most dedicated players busy for a long time. However, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald are beginning to encroach upon the line of diminishing returns when it comes to completion. But if you're a die-hard fan of the world of Pokemon, then look no further. Pokemon Generation 3 may be the most drastically different from the previous games, and they've got a lot of content to keep you going for hours on end. I would say Gen 3 set a certain level of quality that really established how Pokemon games going forward would be received. And if you don't want to pay a bunch for hard to find Game Boy Advance versions, you can buy the remakes Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. The remakes of Pokemon games tend to improve on previous games and bring them up to current quality standards, aside from removing a bunch of good features like, say, the entire Battle Frontier, but it's for another video. However, once again, with the slogan kind of low key forever being gotta catch them all, there really isn't an incentive to do so in this game. So, with that in mind, guys, we give this game our completionist rating of. Finish, Finish it. it. Finish it. That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let us know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. Special thank yous to both our special guests. If you want to check out Tamashi's channel, give it a click right here. And if you want to check out the decks of Pokemon show that I actually produce with Alex Fasciani, Jimmy, and Kelly, give it a click right over here. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna make me some pretty Pokemon. Make them real pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty Pokemon. Make them pretty. <laughs>